Martin, I'm Sarah Simi and this is Pull Out. Um, and today our magazine is OK and High magazine and that's from the 24th of July 1976 and it's 10p. There it is in all its glory. Um, the headlines on the front cover are, can you keep a secret? <laughs> you tell us. Um, and are you a stubborn cow? <laughs> nice isn't it plus the best men ever i've got a feeling that our sally has got something some hand in that <laughs> she does like choosing men she fancies um so cracking straight in on the um in a page there's a quiz called can you keep a secret um i won't read all of it out because some of it's quite dull um <laughs> but there, there were a couple of of um questions which made me laugh um, and also this one is filled in thankfully so we've got the readers answers which is always fun so can you keep a secret <laughs> number one you've seen your next door neighbor out with a man who you know is not her husband <laughs> do you a not breathe a word to anyone b tell everyone that you everyone you know who might be interested or c Ask your mum if she knows anything about it. Oh, isn't that sweet? Ask your mum. The reader here ticked the box of C, ask your mum. <laughs> She's nice. I don't know. This is back in the days when women weren't allowed out with a man that wasn't their husband. <laughs> um, number two, when your boyfriend asks you how much you really do weigh, <laughs> why would he ask you? Do you, A, tell him the truth? B, say it's half a stone less than the truth. Or C, keep quiet. My advice would be keep quiet. Tell him to sod off. Um, they have, the reader here has checked C, keep quiet. <laughs> what an offensive quiz that was. Um, as I say, the rest of the questions are quite dull, so we'll crack on. There's just um, on the hotline, which is the news views happenings, the hottest, biggest, most up to the minute news around, <laughs> which is a misnomer, as we said. Um, someone has written it. <laughs> OK, best concert. I never thought anyone could be so extraordinary until I saw Rick Wakeman play at the Cardiff Capitol. He was great. He played music from all his albums, <laughs> including his new LP, No Earthly Connection. First of all, he came on stage in a long white cape and after half time in a blue cape. <laughs> on his last number, clouds of smoke wafted onto the stage to contrast with the lights. He's the best performer I've ever seen. <laughs> and I hope he continues to write good music. <laughs> and that's from a Rick Wakeman fan, strangely. If you've been to an OK concert, why not tell us all about it too? <laughs> Ooh, a white cape and then a blue cape. Excitement. <laughs> I just wanted to dip into um, Are You a Stubborn Cow? <laughs> Mainly because that's just like the best title ever. It's a fairly dull article. <laughs> I just picked this out because it made me laugh so much. <laughs> Um, it's just, yeah, the whole article is about, you know, don't, don't be stubborn. Don't be, don't be selfish. Um, and <laughs> this bit really made me laugh. The trouble with being one track minded is that it can blind you to common sense. And that's what happened to Deirdre Rose. <laughs> Deirdre is 17 and left school this summer. By the way, there's a picture of Deirdre. She looks quite miserable. I don't think that is Deirdre. I think that's just someone in the office probably, but... Deirdre is 17 and left school this summer. She started looking for a job, but unfortunately, this is what made me laugh. Unfortunately, the area she comes from, the Northeast, <laughs> has a serious unemployment problem. So her, prayer, so her parents tried to help her find work. A friend of Deirdre's mother runs a shop and it turned out that there was a vacancy for a sales assistant. Deirdre told us what her reaction one was when she offered the job. I didn't want it. <laughs> you see, I felt that leaving school ought to mark the beginning of my independence. It goes on. But uh, but I did like the, <laughs> unfortunately, she comes from the Northeast. 
<laughs> anyway, that's basically it for Are You a Stubborn Cow? Um, I wanted to move um, straight on to <laughs> oh, the page that has uh, lots of letters that readers have sent in. <laughs> I do like to pick these out because, oh, I don't know, it's it's just so lovely to to hear how people used to try and find people back in the 70s. Does anyone know Jim Bailey? <laughs> Does anyone know Jim ba- Bailey from Macclesfield? If anyone thinks it sounds familiar, please contact Carol Haney, 238 Oxford Road, Badsford, Newcastle. <laughs> ST5 OQB. <laughs> I met him at a holiday camp in Prestatin and I've been tracing him for the past two years. Oh dear, I think you should give up. <laughs> I don't think you're ever going to find Jim Bailey. <laughs> Wonder if you found him. Anyway, um, this is this is um, when you can ask something. Get, uh, got something you want to know? Then ask us. I'm a mud fan and I'm collecting bits for my scrapbook. I'd be grateful. (laughs) I'd be grateful if you could tell me where Dave Mount used to go to school. That's from Tracy in Cambridge. (laughs) Very specific question and a very specific answer. Dave said, (laughs) they've asked him, Dave said he first went to school at St. Mark's in Mitcham and then to Pollard's Hill Primary. This is scintillating, isn't it? He went to Alfred Mitson School with Rob and then to the Lower Richmond School and last of all to Middle Western Grammar. (laughs) That may be the dullest letter I've ever read out. (laughs) I'm glad we all know. Where Dave Mount went to school. <laughs> um, this is the you said it, which I love because people are normally very angry, very angry indeed, when they have um, either read a letter or read an article in <clears throat> OK and Hi that they disagreed with. But this one um, is from five girls who are now ex Leo Sayer fans. Oh, he's annoyed. I'm. Here we go. Leo's no super guy. We are five girls who have a complaint to make about your super guy in May the 15th issue, Leo Sayer. We don't think he's a super guy at all. (laughs) You see, we went to his gig in Peterborough, paid £2.50 to get in and 40p for a (laughs) programme. We waited outside the stage door after the show to get his autograph, along with 15 other girls. Very specific. Did you count them? 15 other girls. And do you know he was too rude to even smile or say hello to us? Let alone sign 20 autographs. Quite obsessed with the number. He just jumped into his car and drove away. Yet the support group were fantastic. They didn't mind talking to us or signing autographs. The roadies were really rough. <laughs> Leo was flattering himself if he thought we were going to mob him. <laughs> yeah, it's just a pity he spoiled such a good evening by being so selfish. And as I say, that's from five ex Leo Sayer fans from Peterborough. Dear. Oh, Leo. Um, <laughs> There's another one, which is from um, a Carpenters fan in Chichester. (laughs) This letter is from a Carpenters fan to all you argumentative BCR, Bay City Rollers, Osmond, Sparks, Led Zeppelin and Northern Soul fans. That's quite an eclectic mix, isn't it? Please shut up. (laughs) It's all very well feeling indignant because someone's Put your fave group down as playing musical rubbish, looking effeminate. <laughs> oh, looking effeminate and babyish in sequined cat suits or short tartan trousers. <laughs> but why not open your eyes, become less dogmatic in your musical taste, and become actively interested in wider musical spheres? <laughs> Oh I'm a Carpenters fan, but I also listen to other artists. 
such as Oscar Peterson, Simon and Garfunkel, and David Cassidy. <laughs> well, I think we're all a little richer knowing that. <laughs> I've picked out just a couple of letters from this particular um, problem page. Again, we've got the kind of weird two problem page bits. But anyway, this one, <laughs> I picked out one because, oh man, it made me laugh. Um, but the first one I'm going to start with is I'm heartbroken. Um, if you're drinking um, whilst listening to this, please feel free to take a sip every time I say Alan or Paul. <laughs> yeah. I'm heartbroken. At the beginning of this year, I started going out with Alan, <laughs> an 18-year-old American boy who lives opposite me. He seemed keen to take me out, but shortly afterwards, I met a born boy called Paul, and I lost interest in Alan. Two months after I'd finished going out with Paul, he finished with me, and I realised just how much I loved Alan. Alan simply isn't interested in me now, but I am heartbroken. He still seems to like me, and he knows that I don't like Paul anymore, <laughs> but he doesn't ask me out. How can I show him I like him best? Is it too late to get him back? That's Mandy and Cheem. <laughs> right, let's have the answer. Alan was obviously very fond of you and very hurt when you stopped going out with him and started dating Paul. <laughs> and these things do take some getting over. For a start, there is his hurt pride. He's not going to risk you hurting him again if he can help it. So we think that the next move is yours. It's up to you to start talking to Alan again and to show him that you're interested in him and like him a lot. It's up to you to show him that you're sorry that you ever let him go. In short, to use an old-fashioned phrase, you've got to start wooing him back. <laughs> We're sure you'll succeed because you said that he still likes you. All he wants is reassurance that you still like him and that you're sorry about the business with Paul. Good luck. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, how many times did you hear Alan or Paul? <laughs> oh, this is such a fantastic one. This is please help. I desperately need your help as I am unfortunate enough to be a lesbian. <laughs> oh, it should have been titled The Unfortunate Lesbian. <laughs> it sounds like a film. Uh, the Unfortunate Lesbian, starring Maggie Smith. Um, I've, uh, anyway, yes, I'm unfortunate enough to be a lesbian. I have had a wonderful relationship with a boy lasting for two years. But even though I loved him, I still had the urge for a relationship with another girl. And I think about this all the time. I would appreciate it if you could give me an address of someone who could um, help me in my area because I must talk to someone about this. And that's from Sandra in Dewsbury. <laughs> so sweet. Can you give me an address of someone I can talk to? Anyway. Now, <laughs> oh, the answer is fantastic. <laughs> it starts. Homosexuals, both boys and girls, do exist. <laughs> oh, well, good. I bet you didn't know that before, did you? But if you have had a successful relationship with a boy, then it seems to be less likely that you're a lesbian. Perhaps you might be bisexual. That is, capable of enjoying a relationship with someone of either sex. But unless you have actually had a relationship with another girl, don't write yourself off as a lesbian yet. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't write yourself off as a lesbian. However, you are obviously upset and mixed up and need expert help and advice. So why don't you see if there is a youth counselling service in your area who could help you? If not, either the Samaritans or CHE the Campaign for Homosexual Equality, may have a branch in your area and they would be able to help you a lot. Look them up in your local telephone directory. <laughs> oh, that was just fantastic. <laughs> I will remember the unfortunate lesbian forever. So I'm just cracking on now with um, Sally Superguys. <laughs> 
<laughs> where um, Sally likes to pick out famous men she fancies and write about them in, frankly, quite a gratuitous manner, quite often. Um, she started with a bit about um, uh, Mick Jagger. There's a picture of Mick Jagger looking very young, very handsome. Feeling sound like Sally here. Um, it's called, <laughs> it's headlined, A Bucket Full of Mick. How would you feel if your super guy threw a bucket of cold water all over you? <laughs> would that happen? Because that's Mick Jagger's latest trick, and it seemed no one minded in the least. People just left the Stones concert with the plastic buckets they'd been lucky enough to catch. <laughs> it's real good to see Mick is still in fine, swearing, pouting, flaunting form. Well, that was very difficult to read out. I think I've always fancied him because my parents always detested him. He's disgustingly vulgar. They used to say. <laughs> so I used to stick up even more Mick Jagger posters around the room. And the Stones music was always so shocking, raunchy and randy. <laughs> oh, randy. Word. That I think that's what Sally is, frankly. <laughs> that's why I was really sad when Mick left this country. Things seemed so tame once he'd gone. So he's one of my super guys this week. <laughs> um, she's also <laughs> oh, and that's called Clint in colour. God, you have to be very careful. I say that. Well, I finally got my way, and I hope you don't mind too much. My most super guy of all super guys is the rough and tough Clint Eastwood. So I've sneaked, sneaked this colour picture in, and it makes an okay pin-up, doesn't it? There's a, <laughs> there's a lovely, indeed a very big, colourful picture of Clint Eastwood. <laughs> oh, Sally's really off on one. <laughs> um... And then she's also picked out Gerald Harper. <laughs> um, I think Sally just fancies anyone. There's a picture of Gerald Harper for the... <laughs> now, I'm not being rude, but he looks a tad older than someone that a teenager would fancy. <laughs> Without being rude. This is what Sally says. <laughs> Have you ever fancied an older man? <laughs> I certainly don't wish to insult Gerald Harper by suggesting he's too old. Far from it. No, I mean someone with a wider experience of life than most boys you meet. <laughs> I think I'd like to go out with an older man. It would mean I could relax a little. <laughs> Why does that mean that she can relax? Anyway, up until now, I've dated people the same age as me. <laughs> And, as they say, girls mature quicker than boys. Usually he's still learning the right places to go, films to see and things to do. And he's counting the pennies too, which is sometimes a drag. I think if I met an older man, it would be rather nice to let him pick me up and swan me off somewhere okay, instead of having to suggest where to go. And I'd listen with interest. As he told me all the things he'd done. <laughs> and if it was someone like Gerald Harper, then, then I expect, if I was lucky, he might send me a dozen red roses and a bottle of champagne occasionally. <laughs> Does she think that all older men are sort of James Bond? <laughs> I don't know. That's classic. Anyway, Gerald Harper, look him up. <laughs> Anyway, moving on, I found a bit in this magazine, which um, I, I don't know why has passed me by before, which is, which is a shame, <laughs> which is OK Poetry. <laughs> and yes, it's as bad as it already sounds. Um, it's people, <laughs> girls who have written in poems, <laughs> which are frankly terrible. I thought I'd <laughs> pick a couple out. This is <clears throat> to Billy. I lie and think, think of you. <laughs> I think of our last meeting. I think of our last kiss, our last words, <laughs> our last laugh. Yes, happy thoughts. How little time we needed to realise how close we were. My thoughts full of joy. No, full of love for you. Oh, and that's from Loretta. <laughs> um, this one. 
This one is thoughts of you. The thoughts of you are very faint, even though you are so near. But when you said you loved me, I knew then that I must fear. Like a fire blazing, a hailing storm, you came to me one night. With you standing there so tall and strong, I saw no fear inside. My hand went out to touch your face, but touch it did not do. You really weren't there that night. It was only me thinking of you. <laughs> oh, it's fabulous. And that's from T.L. Parry in Reading. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I don't think it's... I'll just read out the last one because it's quick and um, kiss me. We walked, we talked, and I said, kiss me. And you did. I love you. And I will always be here. Becky from Lincolnshire. <laughs> oh, that's just fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> what fantastic poetry. <laughs> I bet your soul is fulfilled now, isn't it? I've just quickly picked out, I found an OK Beauty box, which is about <laughs> making your bottom tops, uh, which is basically about how it says... Are you going to wear a bikini this summer? You'll need a toned, shapely bottom to look good. <laughs> a flabby bottom spoils the slimmest waist and the flattest tummy. <laughs> Try our exercises every morning and evening to make your bottom tops. <laughs> Remember, exercises have to be combined with a good, healthy diet to make you super slim and bikini proud. Ah. <laughs> uh, early beach body ready, I believe. Um, anyway, this it says, this exercise is so easy that it can even be done at the bus stop. <laughs> Stand up straight with your feet together, draw in your bottom muscles really hard, relax, repeat eight times. <laughs> oh, that's fun to do at the um, bus stop. It also suggests cycling in the air for bottoms. Lay on, your, <laughs> lay on the floor on your side and cycle with your legs. Or lie flat on your back and cycle. It's um, accompanied by the most fantastic and, I have to say, rather simple illustrations of how you exercise. <laughs> and there are some great big arrows pointing at a bottom, just in case you weren't sure what your bottom was. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. This is obviously a very summery episode as it's in July. So the um, double page spread of what's okay. So things which are okay or not okay are all very beach based um, <laughs> in this one. So it's, for example, it's okay to take a long walk along the beach in the moonlight. Very romantic. It's not okay <laughs> when you can't get your skirt button done up and your trousers feel too tight. I don't know if that's specifically to do with the summer. But, um, <laughs> then it's, it's not okay to forget to send your best friend a postcard while you're while you're away, and it's not okay to wear heavy to wear heavy shoes and tights on a hot day because they'll make you feel sweaty. I think I could have worked that out for myself, but anyway, um, there's one which is hello. I'm Becky. I work in the OK Fashion Department, and there's a picture of her in a what looks like a rather tropical location says hi as you can see we're still soaking up the sunshine in ibiza and this time we're off <laughs> to an early evening barbecue which should be lots of fun it's sometimes a bit difficult to know what to wear in the evening when you still want to look casual so i chose this black cheesecloth dress from fennec which really did the trick being a nice evening <laughs> i was quite warm enough and of course black stopped me from getting dirted by all the charcoal <laughs> by all the charcoal <laughs> smoke and and lovely hot dripping bangers <laughs> oh lovely hot dripping bangers <laughs> well that's certainly a euphemism anyway mm, i love barbecues don't you see you all next week becky <laughs> good to know becky's having a good time in ibiza <laughs> with her big sausage um, moving on there, so there's, um, um, I mentioned in a previous um, 
episode about love is, this isn't the love is um, little characters, which were slightly creepy in retrospect, that were little naked children. <laughs> but this is an article entitled Love Is. It's something very, very special between two people, something that just <laughs> won't keep itself hidden away. Uh, yeah, there's a few classics here. Love is cheering him on at the local matches, standing there in scarf and hat, the ones I'd specially knitted in the right colours, shouting my head off in a most unfeminine manner, but I must admit I enjoy it. Then staying in on a Saturday night and watching the big match, cuddled up on the settee, trying to keep awake. <laughs> oh, the big match. Um, <clears throat> love is waiting for the promised phone calls that never came, and the unromantic Valentine card, <laughs> wearing the horrible green striped dress that he loves and I hate, <laughs> and the flat shoes because I'm taller than him. <laughs> Putting on my old denims and helping wash the car whilst Paul mucks about with the engine. <laughs> this is a classic. Eating lots of salads and unfattening foods because he hates fat girls. <sighs> Learning how to play chess because it's his favourite pastime. Helping share his homework from college. Because <laughs> obviously she hasn't got any homework from college. <laughs> Love is... Keeping my hair long and not having it cut because he likes it better that way. <laughs> oh, these are classic. Um, yeah, uh, love is taking me to see my pop idol and him sitting there quietly while I scream my tiny little head off. Taking me to the pictures to see the weepy le <laughs> leaning my head on his shoulder and having a good old cry. Telling me I wasn't fat. <laughs> when it was a fact that I was. <laughs> Buying me my favourite perfume, treating me to a slap-up meal in the local restaurant on my birthday. Oh, a slap-up meal. <laughs> yeah, they were some very strange love that is. <laughs> Worrying on many levels. I thought we'd pause um, uh, briefly at Rick's Rock Report. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I always love to see right Rick <laughs> with his lovely curly hair. Um, Rick's Rock Report, <laughs> this one, I just, uh, obviously David Essex is featured as David Essex is always featured. <clears throat> um, <laughs> but this one is, uh, this is about mud. There's a picture of mud, the band mud. Um, and this just made me laugh because it's just, well, mud, mud, glorious mud had a thirst quenching tale to tell, to tell me from their stay in Finland. <laughs> Much of beer guzzling <laughs> less his time. <laughs> Can you imagine a singer now being happy that someone <laughs> talks about his beer guzzling? <laughs> Much of beer guzzling Leslie's time was spent drinking dry the pubs there. But being the connoisseur of beer he is, he got more and more unhappy with the lukewarm beer they served. <laughs> Ray, seeing Leslie's face get longer and longer, suddenly had a brainwave. Finland's an ice cold country, he thought. The next thing I knew, Les said, Ray had put on his anorak, <laughs> sexy anorak, put on his anorak gone out into a nearby mountain with a bucket and shovel and scooped up enough ice and snow to make the beer shiver. <laughs> that was a story about someone making their beer cold. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, well, we've romped on to, <clears throat> okay, it's a fact of life. Um, just picked out a couple of <laughs> letters on this one. This is Pat answering these today, which we always like. Um, and um, <laughs> I've picked out this one. It's not um, particularly interesting, but it does have the most fabulous word in the answer, which I'm definitely going to start using a lot more. So, question. 
I have a few really nice summer tops to wear, but the trouble is they make my bust look so small. Once, when I went out, a boy thought I was another boy. I was wearing makeup and my face doesn't look anything like a boy's. Please, can you tell me where I could buy a padded bra and roughly how much they cost? <laughs> Sweet. Pat says, <clears throat> you can buy pre-shaped bras at almost any shop which stocks underwear. And this might well be the answer to your problem. The cost is roughly the same as any other sort of bra, depending on where you go to buy your undies. Obviously, they'll cost a lot more if you go to some to some swish place, <laughs> more than if you just go to a chain store. If you go to a shop which specialises in underwear or the negligee department <laughs> of a good store, the assistant will be delighted to help you, I'm sure, and will give you all the advice and help with fitting that you need. Oh, negligee. Negligee is such a 70s word. <laughs> I really am going to use the word negligee at all possible opportunities. I might start wearing a negligee. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> this is just the other letter that I've picked out on uh, on this page. <laughs> oh, so much to love of this one. Question. I'm a bit ignorant when it comes to sex and lovemaking, and I've no idea of sex education. I know that during petting, <laughs> oh, the petting is back, the petting zoo. Um, I know that during petting, the girl is meant to touch the man's penis, but for how long? <laughs> would you recommend a good book? <laughs> so I would like to know. I don't remember a book from the 70s that told you how long to touch a penis. It's certainly a book I'd like to get a hold of now. <laughs> oh, Pet's answer is, <clears throat> if you write to the Family Planning Association uh, Book Centre, <clears throat> 29 Mortimer Street, London, W1A, 4QW, enclosing a stamped self-addressed envelope. <laughs> God, it was long-winded getting information in the 70s, wasn't it? Have to take in weeks to get back. They will send you. <laughs> they will send you their latest book list. So you, that's even just the, the list of the books. You're still not getting a book. Mm. <laughs> Plus a brief description of their contents, and you will be able to choose the best book to answer your questions. The How long to touch a penis? Book <laughs> would probably be helpful. Mm. <laughs> Um, the book will be sent to you if you order one under plain cover so that no one will know what it is that you've sent for. Mm. Learning to, this title of this book, <clears throat> Learning to Live with Sex by the FPA, which is 25p plus 12p postage and packing, might be the sort of book you would find helpful. <laughs> Learning to Live with Sex. <laughs> sound like a sort of noisy neighbour that you have to put up with. <laughs> oh dear. <clears throat> but many of the questions you might want to ask, such as your question about how long a girl touches a boy's penis during petting, simply can't be answered in a book because there is no right or wrong answer. <laughs> it's all a matter of personal experience. And what suits one couple during petting may not suit another. Well, I think that's <laughs> covered it all. I'm going to, after this, I'm going to go and look up, see if I can find the book, which is called Learning to Live with Sex. Quite fascinating. <laughs> ah, well, that was fun. Um, on the back cover <laughs> is an advert for Rimmel. These are Rimmel perfumes, and I love this ad. It's just got them, oh, the, the design of the perfume bottles. It's just perfect. Um, so these are Rimmel uh, Parfum de Toilette, <laughs> de Toilette even, sprays. Three exciting new long-lasting fragrances created in France exclusively for Rimmel. Um, the descriptions of them are fab. By the way, they're all 98p each, which is a bargain. 
Um, there's Can Can, Rosie, and Ego. <laughs> Can Can has a red label, and this is for, <laughs> this is their description, sexy, smooth, sensuous, with all the exciting eroticism <laughs> of the frou-frou dancers. <laughs> its mossy top notes descend to a background of heady sweetness. God, that copyright I was having a field day, that eh? The perfect fragrance for the woman who dares to live life to the fullest. <laughs> It's funny because they're such over-the-top descriptions, and yet it's possibly the most dull <laughs> photograph. Anyway. Rosie, <clears throat> beautifully young, fresh and evocative with a saucy devil-may-care quality. Its soaring top notes, a blend of florals with a rose at its heart, are rounded off by spicy and sensual bass note, bringing out the girl in every woman. <laughs> and lastly, ego. Projects the essence of sophistication from within its woody, spicy middle notes, set against a floral background with a musky bass note. <laughs> a fragrance specially attuned to the woman who is assured of her own femininity. <laughs> well, there we are. Well, on that note, <laughs> I feel like I know more about Rimmel's <laughs> perfume than I ever have before. Fabulous. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. That was OK and High magazine for the 24th of July, 1976. And I'll see you next time. Bye.